So this gets really cool. Um, there's different ways to categorize sensory receptors. There's two main ways I wanna talk about. One we're gonna start with is where the sensory receptors are located. Um, so typically when we think of the senses, we think of external stimuli outside of the body. These are called exteroreceptors, exteroceptors. So the stimulus is outside of the body. The stimulus origin is what this is referring to here. So most of what we'll talk about will be these type of receptors, light, sound, taste, um, smell, and touch, right? So external touch. The other type of receptors are interoceptors. So these are located inside the body. So they're sometimes called visceroceptors as well. So your visceral signals. Um, so the stimulus is inside the body. So some examples we've seen of this already, is the muscle spindle. So that's a type of proprioceptor that tells you about body position. These interoceptors could also be in the internal organs, um, telling you about the stretch of various smooth muscles, um, blood pressure, things like that. So that's location of the receptor, of the stimulus, which also is where the receptor is going to be as well to detect that stimulus. You also can classify and categorize sensory receptors based on the type, type of stimulus. This is location of stimulus. We've also got type of stimulus. And we've seen some of these already. What things do we need to be able to detect? These should kind of make sense. So we've got photoreceptors. What do these detect? Light. These are special receptors that are able to transduce light into a neural signal. So cool. We've got thermo receptors detect temperature. We've got chemoreceptors. These detect chemicals. So this would be somewhat similar to a ligand-gated channel, but these typically are things, well, the two examples um, for special sensing are taste and smell are actually chemicals binding to a receptor to transduce those signals. We've got nociceptors. These detect pain. And we've got a broad category called mechanoreceptors. You've heard of these, right? Mechanically gated ion channels is an example of this. When there's actual physical distortion of the membrane that would open, for example, these channels. These come in a lot of different types. So one is baroreceptors detect blood pressure. We we'll also see various types of tactile receptors. So we're gonna see quite a few different types of mechanoreceptors. The last one I just wanna mention is osmoreceptors. These are detecting um, osmolarity, so blood osmolarity. We won't talk much about these this semester. So these are all specialized to detect certain stimuli. 
we'll look at some of them more specifically. The last thing I want to tell you about receptors for now in terms of broad is these different ways they can look. So there are receptors for general senses and there's receptors for special senses. Special senses are much more complex in terms of the whole organ that makes them up. So this would be Vision is the one that we will look at most closely. Taste, smell, hearing, equilibrium are all special senses. They have special organs that um, help them work. General senses are a lot simpler. So this would be typically, um, this is also called somato sensation. Typically, um, it's various types of mechanoreceptors that allow for touch, but also thermal pain, pain and temperature. So these two are the general senses here. Free nerve endings is what's shown here. This is also called unencapsulated. Should be an N there. And that's in contrast to encapsulated. So this enclosed nerve ending here is embedded in these layers of connective tissue that allow it to respond to different stimuli. So it's a little bit more specialized um, in terms of what it responds to. We'll see some of these. So then special senses often have this set up here. What's going on here? This is a separate cell, a specialized cell. In this case, it's a hair cell that responds to physical distortion and sound waves actually is one thing the hair cells can respond to, one type of hair cells. So these sensory receptor cells are what are gonna detect the stimulus and transmit that to the sensory neuron. So it's a different setup here. These cells, specialized receptor cells can be variable in how they look. So a taste cell is gonna look different than this. A visual cell is gonna look different than this. Photoreceptor will see some of those. In all of these cases, the stimulus is going to change a cause a change in the conformation of some protein. So either through the mechanical binding, the light binding, the hair cells moving, that is going to transduce that signal by changing membrane potential. So that's, that is what signal or sensory transduction is. Ultimately, this is going to travel to the central nervous system to be sensed and then processing in the central nervous system could allow for perception of that stimulus.